Well, I'm from Martinsville. Martinsville is a super fun site. It has been for uh, polluted with PCE and TCE for 30 years. There's been virtually no activity on it until I, four years ago, I started the Martinsville Indiana Superfund Site Association, which is essentially a public forum looking at information, data, what's been happening, what hasn't been happening. So, and my background is I'm an environmental engineer. I was the environmental engineer on the B-1 bomber and the space shuttle at Air Force Plant 42 in California. <clears throat> so when I, when I wound up back here, because my family's been in Morgan County for over 200 years, uh, we have all these problems there, nothing is being done on it. One of the reasons why I'm running is, one, it's, that's my background. We have a need, nothing's being addressed. The item's uh, budget has been reduced by 25% in the last few years. So we need to start looking at quality of life, health risk, health effects. And when we look at Morgan County, we have one of the highest cancer rates in the state. We have a large group of Down syndrome kids in Martinsville. And we have certain types of cancer that are very rare, but we have like five cases of GIST in Martinsville. Well, uh, when I was at Rockwell, I also sat on the Rockwell Corporate Environmental Council. And the Rockwell at that time uh, also operated the Hanford nuclear site, the Santa Susana uh, nuclear and engine test site, weed patch and a couple other facilities. What we would do, we would look at upcoming legislation, how it would affect any of the facilities and have to look at policies and procedures on our, each individual facility to see what we would have to do to come in compliance. So when you're looking at you know, developing legislation, particularly from the environmental point of view, I've been through quite a lot of that, I've written the policies and procedures for uh, how we're going to implement that legislation and even did some TOs for the Air Force. Uh, also did budgets there as well. Uh, plus I'm on the board of trustees of the Scottish Society and the Scottish Foundation. And we put on the Highland Games every year. Have you been to the Scottish Highland Games? It's one of the largest Highland Games in the country and we do have the largest field of athletes. I also belong to Mensa and work with gifted kids. So I have a particular thing about education. We're not looking at, in the high schools, adequate technical or vocational training at all. So we need to change our education system to do a couple things. One, we need more science classes, we need life skills, and we need to start putting in more vocational and technical training. Well, actually, I'd, try, I'd say there's actually four, four cardinal points. That would be jobs, health care, <clears throat> education and the environment, simply because none of them are standalone issues. They're all dependent on one, each other, and you have to look at some sort of integrated form to make them all function and work. If you try and do it in a standalone, you're going to wind up spending too much money, I think. You're not going to get anything that's going to functionally work. When we're looking at jobs, trying to create new jobs in Indiana, if you have an industry that comes in, they look at several things, location for once, quality of life, the environment affects that. So that a lot of communities, they will be just out of the ballpark altogether, especially if you have a super fun site. They're going to look at a healthy workforce, and they're going to look at a trained and educated workforce. So all these elements, they have to work together. Well, I think the most immediate one is going to be our budget. Uh, <clears throat> everyone talks about this big surplus we have, but the fact that I know in Martinsville, for example, the income from uh, service industries, uh, entertainment, restaurants, and such, just off 46%. So that's probably going to be pretty standard across the state, I think. Maybe even more so in Indianapolis. Maybe a whole lot more in Indianapolis, simply because so much of its economy is uh, service-oriented and convention-oriented and tourist-oriented. So we're going to have budget shortfalls across the board, statewide, and to a lot of cities. So we're going to be looking at somehow making sure the cities don't go bankrupt, because that is a possibility. And then looking at what we're going to do about education and teachers, which is a unique factor. People don't seem to realize that back in 2009, the uh, legislator took, took uh, 
$300 million out of the school budget, which if you put that in today's dollars, that's like $385 million. And that's never been put back in. So we've already had a huge reduction in school spending. And if you were to factor in the alleged increases from the, that time till now, we're actually spending less money today than we were in 2009 on education. And then during that time, a lot of money they did have, they squandered on vouchers and charter schools. And if we're going to continue with any type of e-learning, the western part of it is very rural. There's not really a major city or even a town, right? Fundamentally, there's not even a hamlet in that part of the district. So if you have people out there and kids, there's no broadband, there's no internet at all. So we need, do need to look at broadband access across the board for uh, e-learning, which is probably going to become more prevalent in the future. And that is also ties in with health care, because so much health care is telemedicine these days. <clears throat> and the way the health care system is structured in Indiana, one, uh, allegedly it's nonprofit, and yet Anthem made $3 billion in profit in this last quarter. So there is some little restructuring I think the state's going to have to take about. If you're a nonprofit and you're a health care and you're making more money in a quarter than the state has in reserves, something is not quite kosher at that point. And we look, too, that they're looking at creating more regional health campuses and closing down all the little satellite things, offices in, in uh, smaller towns like Franciscan Health had an office in Martinsville. They closed it down. So there's no longer Franciscan Health service in Martinsville. You have to drive to Mooresville. There's other places where there's no service of any kind. There, I think there's 40 counties in the state that have no hospital in them. Indiana has the sixth highest child mortality rate in the country. It has like the 11th, I think, highest obesity rate. We have the same maternal mortality rate as Ethiopia and some African countries do in, this, in Indiana. So healthcare, you know, they're making tons of money, getting smaller services to fewer people, especially out in rural areas. And no matter what you think, we're still a rural state.